I want to talk to you about an inspirational story. If you need a little bit of a pep in your step today, if you need to look at something and say, I, I can do it, I must not give up, I need to continue working on my dream, on my passion, what it is that I'm up to, then listen to this story. It's about a guy called Goran. He's from Norway and he started a indie game studio called Misk Games. And what he wanted to do, what he was really passionate about, was making a fishing game, like a true fishing boat captain simulation, where you're out there on the high seas and the, the waves are bumping your boat and the seagulls are squawking around and you put the net out in the water and you catch fish and then you have to take it back and sell it. So a simulation game with some, some strategy to it, but just the immersion of being a real fishing boat captain. And so many years ago, he started on this journey, he started making some prototypes, he teamed up with some other folks, so he needed a programmer to help him do a lot of the programmery stuff, he needed an artist to make 3D models, he played around with different engines, settled on the Unreal Engine because he wanted to get that really realistic look to it. And over the course of five years, he didn't pay himself a cent from his studio, from his company. Any money that came in went to paying his team. So he was doing it tough. At the, for a long time, he had his day job, and that was what he had to pay the bills. But then after a while, he said, well, you know what, I, I'm gonna focus on this full time. I think it's gonna succeed. I want it to succeed. I know it's gonna succeed. So he focused on it full time. But it was five years where it didn't pay him any money. He didn't give up. He kept at it, kept going, kept going, kept going. And at some point, he got to the point where his prototype felt good. It felt like the experience that he was going for. And so he started talking to publishers and going to conferences and demoing his game and getting people interested in it. And, but looking for the right people, not just saying, I'm gonna to go to any old publisher and see how it goes, but finding publishers who are interested in simulation games, interested in the, the sort of game that he's making and already have a relationship with that audience. So he teamed up with a publisher, and they said, yep, let's make this happen. So then over the months and years, they worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, and launched the game. And now it's at the point, I was talking to him just recently, and he said he was really proud of this, but it was proud in a way of, uh, it wasn't an overnight thing. It wasn't like, oh my goodness, we've just won the lottery. It was a, uh, this has been a long marathon and I'm still running, I'm still going, I'm still right in the thick of it, is that Fishing Barrent C, that's the game they've worked on, is in the top 25 revenue earners on Steam for, I forget which period it was, for a particular year, for last year just passed, I believe. And so he's got to the point where he's got, <laughs> all of his investment, all of his time is really starting to pay off and he can now have money coming in to finally actually pay himself and to be able to work on his next game and to build his team and start building his studio and so on. But this is a story of two main things. It's a story of not giving up. I, I talked to the guy when he was right in the middle of it and there's lots of stuff going on and, and he needs to figure out how to do things and he needs teammates to work with and he needs money to pay people. And it, there's tough times. There really are tough times. It's not something making games, doing anything really, starting your own business, being an entrepreneur. It doesn't, you don't just click your fingers and it all just happens. There's going to be the downs as well as the ups. There's gonna be the dark times as well as the light times. So he kept pushing through, he didn't give up. He refused to give up. And he also refused to stop working at it. He didn't say, well, I'm kinda of gonna go do something else for a year and come back to it, maybe. He has been working on it, working on it, working on it. It's so inspirational to talk to him because he's just like, yes, this is gonna happen. So that's the one big thing that I really want you to take out of it is if you're in the middle of working on something and you feel like you're in that down period or the dark times, then the only way to get to the light times, the, the good times, is to keep working at it consistently every single day. So don't let those moments of, ah, of doubt knock you off course. You've got to keep going, but consistently. And the other thing I want you to get out of this is, when I talked to him recently, he's saying, yeah, my, my vision, my dream, is to make the best boat simulation games on the internet, or uh, th that's out there, like to be make the best boat simulation games. He wasn't saying, I wanna make the best company ever, I wanna make uh, AAA first person shooters. He was picking this one spot and saying, I like this, I know this, this is where we are, I'm gonna be amazing at that. That's a, such a good lesson to take out of it, because often we have a little bit of success, or even a little bit of failure, and we say, okay, maybe I should broaden it. Maybe I should be more general. Maybe I should do more things. Maybe there's not enough of a market for the thing that I'm trying to create, but there is a market 
for everything so long as that you've got a really good product. So how many people out there are really passionate in fishing boat simulation type games? Enough to have this game be in the top 25 Steam games in terms of revenue. So think about that when it comes to what game are you working on? But the other point in that, maybe this is a third point in my not well figured out <laughs> conversation with you at the moment. The third point I'm gonna add on is that don't go and chase what everyone else is doing. Find an area that you're interested in, you're passionate about, and make it your own. So if you're really interested in story-based games and narrative-based games, then don't just do yet another adventure game with some, you know, some lore to the world and some backstory for the characters. Go and make something that is truly unique. Like the Stanley Parable, where the entire game is about the narrator talking to the player. It's, it's unusual, it's different, it, it really appeals to someone who's super into narrative. And look for the differentiation, but look for the, the specialization. Look to make something that is, this is very narrow in a way that's going to amazingly delight a very specific group of people, and everyone else is going to be like, no, I'm not really into that. How many people are into fishing uh, simulation games? No. Oh probably, I don't know, 5% of all video game, gamers out there. So, but that's okay. That can lead to success. So, I hope you take some inspiration out of this story. I certainly have whenever I talk to Goran. The fact that he's just focused and going for it and not giving up and being consistent is just so inspirational. And his game, Fishing Barren Sea, is doing really well and hopefully more games to come from him and his studio. So. Hopefully this has been a useful conversation to you. As always, let me know in the comments and I will talk to you again real soon.